गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई एम मोहम्मद जुनेद सिद्दीकी वेलकम इन द ब्रिज डिजाइन एंड इंजीनियरिंग सब्जेक्ट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एनालिसिस ऑफ ए लेटिस गर्डर ब्रिज स्टेटिकली डिटर्मिनेट ट्रस फॉर ए ब्रॉड गेज रेलवे लाइन बाय यूजिंग इन्फ्लुएंस लाइन डायग्राम वॉट इज ब्रॉड गेज रेलवे लाइन लोडिंग सो एज we are considering the live load and the dead load so here in the analysis of a lattice gutter bridge for the live load we are considering the railway loadings now well let's start with a numerical analyze a lattice gutter bridge for a broad gauge railway line what do you mean by analysis so here we need to determine the forces in each member of the truss So effective span is thirty meter. Sleepers spacing is of four hundred mm center to center. The material for the sleepers are reinforced concrete. So we'll use the density of reinforced concrete. While we need to determine the loading from the sleepers, the length of the sleeper is given two point five meter, whereas the cross section of the sleeper is two fifty mm by two fifty mm. Self weight of the strangers are given thousand newton per meter. Self weight of rails, as well check rails, are six hundred newton per meter. For the impact loading, here we are going to consider a coefficient of dynamic augment as per the bridge rule. So for different different tracks, the formula is different. So in our problem, for single span track, the formula is. 0.15 plus 8 divided by 6 plus L. Now, bridge is to be designed to carry a single track broad gauge loading. So, what do you know? Broad gauge loading, 1987. So, for that we have to refer a bridge rule. So, bridge rule rules specifying the loads for design of superstructure and substructure. of bridges and for assessment of the strength of existing bridge modified broad gauge loading 1987 broad gauge 1676 mm is mentioned in appendix 2 page number 21 of bridge rules so equivalent uniformly distributed load on each track and coefficient of dynamic augment is given here we to determine the forces in each member will consider the total load for bending moment with respect to their spans from this table the span is given here from 1 meter to 130 meter the truss is given in the problem so here we can see these are the diagonals this is the vertical post and this are the end post and our truss is of simply supported is the top view of the truss in that top lateral beams as well as struts are mentioned top view in that we can see this are the rails and this verticals are the sleepers and stringers are also given here so while we consider the dead load so that time will consider all loadings This is section A A of previous figure. This is end section. Now we'll start with the analysis. In analysis, first we'll do the dead load calculation. Some data is given in our problem. If something is not mentioned, so we'll assume it. Self weight of the truss girder, which is not mentioned in our problem, so here we'll assume fifteen thousand newton per meter. is a self weight of the truss girder since here per track is given so each track carries minimum two truss girder so that's why here we have multiply this 15000 into 2 self weight of the strangers 1000 newton per meter self weight of the sleeper so cross section into length volume into density Divide by spacing, so we'll get 
द सेल्फ वेट ऑफ स्लीपर इन न्यूटन पर मीटर सो नाइन न्यूटन पर मीटर वेर एज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली टेन थाउजेंड न्यूटन पर मीटर सेल्फ वेट ऑफ द रेल्स सिक्स हंड्रेड न्यूटन पर मीटर सेल्फ वेट ऑफ चेक रेल्स सिक्स हंड्रेड न्यूटन पर मीटर टोटल डेड लोड इज फोर्टी टू थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड न्यूटन पर मीटर सो हियर वील सी इन अ वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप सेल्फ वेट ऑफ द ट्रस्ट गडर वी हैव मल्टीप्लाई विद द टू रेस्ट ऑफ द टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स फोर फाइव स्टेप्स वे नॉट मल्टीप्लाई विद द टू because all the data which is given in problem is per track so self weight of the stranger self weight of the sleeper self weight of the rails and check rails is given in problem for per track so now we need to determine the dead load on girder each girder so we'll divide this since this is of per track so as and below one track there are two girder so on each girder we'll divide it by 2 therefore total dead load per girder is 21100 newton per meter or we can say 21.1 kilo newton per meter this dead load will consider while we are analyzing the trusses member spacing and depth of the girder so for spacing will refer the irs rule so as per the clause of irs 4.6 spacing and depth of girder so here in no case shall it be less than 120th of the span for open web girders so span by 20 it should not be less than 1 by 20 of the span so span is of 30 meter so 30 divided by 20 is 1.5 1.5 meter depth of the girder the depth between gravity axis of the top and bottom cord shall be not greater than 3 times the width between the centers of the main girders so here we are consider the spacing is of 7 meter so it should be the depth should be less than 3 times the spacing is of 21 meter as well the depth of truss shall preferably be not less than 1/10 of the span so span by 10 so 30 by 10 is 3 meter so in between 21 meter and 3 meter will consider the depth of the girder as 7.5 meter so therefore the spacing is of 7 meter and depth of the girder as 7.5 meter so this is our truss the depth of the truss is defined here 7.5 meter whereas the center to center distance between two struts is given as 5 meter so now we need to analyze the truss that means we need to determine the forces in each member of the truss so here will there are two methods one method is method of section and second method is method of joints since here loading is of not a still load here loading is of moving load or we can say the loading is of dynamic loading so here we'll go by the method of section so we'll take here the section 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 which cuts all the left hand side of the truss if we'll get all the forces of left hand side similarly we'll get the forces in right hand side of the truss member while we keep the unit load over the span at a distance x from a so the reaction at a will be w b by l which is 30 minus x by 30 and reaction at b will be w a by l which is x by 30 first we'll start with the section 1 1 which cuts the top cord member u2 u3 diagonal member u2 l3 and bottom cord member l2 l3 first top cord members so solving for the section u2 u3 that means we need to determine the forces in member u2 u3 so we'll keep the unit load here we need to draw a influence line diagram to determine the force in the member u2 u3 
so how we'll draw the influence line diagram already we have cut the section so we need to determine the ordinates of influence line diagram at either ends and where we have cut the section so either side of the section so we'll keep the unit load first in the left hand side of the section 1 1 then we'll keep the unit load in the right hand side of the section 1 1 so so when unit load is in the region AL2 here we consider fixed origin so origin either left hand side or right hand side so here we have considered the left hand side A as a origin so if we will keep the unit load in this region so while we keep the unit load in this region AL2 so A as x distance at A is 0 meter here is 5 meter here is 10 meter so here we can see the limit of x 0 less than equal to x less than equal to 10 meter so since we have kept the unit load in the left hand side of the section so for simplicity we will consider right hand side of the section 1 1 so here we have to determine the force in the member u2 u3 so we will take the moment at l3 so moment at l3 is equal to 0 so x by 30 into 15 plus f of u2 u3 into 7.5 meter so we will rearrange the term so f of u2 u3 is equal to minus x into 15 divided by 30 into 7.5 so again we will simplify this so f of u2 u3 is equal to minus x by 15. Since we have considered the two value of x or we will say the limit of x is 0 to 10 meter so first we will determine the ordinates of influence line diagram at x equal to 0 so the force ordin the force of influence line diagram ordinate will be 0 at x equal to 10 meter so we'll get it f of u2 u3 as minus 0.67 this is not exactly the forces these are the ordinates for the force diagram so now we'll keep the unit load in the right hand side of the section 1 1 so the limits will be 15 meter to 30 meter since this time we have kept the unit load in the right hand side of the section 1 1 so for the sake of simplicity or for the simple calculation we will consider the left hand side of the section 1 1. So summation of moment at L3 is equal to 0 so 30 minus x by 30 into 15 plus f of u2 u3 into 7.5 so f of u2 u3 a becomes minus 30 minus x into 15 divided by 30 into 7.5 so for this we are considered the x limit as 15 to 30 meter so at x equal to 15 we'll get the ordinates for the f of u to u3 as minus 1 at x equal to 30 meter obviously we'll get it 0 so our influence line diagram for the force in the member u2 u3 will be like this so at x equal to 0 it is 0 at x equal to 10 it is minus 0 0.67 at x equal to 15 it is minus 1 at x equal to 30 it is 0 so it will become a triangular shape in a negative side so negative indicate the total force in the member is compressive so now we will determine force in the member u2 u3 so forces are due to dead load as well as due to live load so force due to dead load is equal to area of influence line diagram into dead load area of influence line diagram is equal to minus half into 30 is the span length as well as this one 
is from here. So minus half into 30 into 1 whereas the dead load is 21.1 which we obtained in a starting 21.1 kilonewton per meter dead load on each girder. So here we will get force due to dead load as minus 316.5 kilonewton. So this minus sign indicate this is compressive force. Now force due to live load the formula remains same area of influence line diagram into load here into CDA. So what is CDA? CDA is the coefficient of dynamic augment. Due to live load there is the effect of impact or we can say the shock or we can say the dynamic. So dynamic effect here we will consider for per track single track. So single track the formula is given in a problem. So CDA is 0.15 plus 8 divided by 6 plus L. So for this force in the member since influence line diagram is totally of 30 meter. So here span length is of 30. So CDA value is 0.372. That means 37.2 percentage we have to increase in the live load. So for the 30 meter span from the bridge rule we will see 30 meter total load for the bending moment so which is 2727 kilonewton so in our calculation we will consider this load but but this 2727 kilonewton load is for per track and here we are determining the forces on each girder that means we have to divide it by 2 so 2727 divided by 2 kilonewton divided by 30 is the kilonewton per meter for the intensity we have to divide it by the total span length into area of the influence line diagram minus half into 30 into 1 into 1.372 that means we are increasing the load by 37.2 percentage so we'll get the load as 935.36 kilonewton with negative sign this negative indicate the load is compressive. Now finally we need to determine the design load. So here we will fill this table. So forces in the member due to dead load. Forces in the member due to live load. We will do the combination of the dead load and the live load in compression and tension. And finally we will get the design load. So here we obtain the top chords member forces. So for U to U3. As we obtained first the forces in the member due to dead load which was compress compressive force 316.5 and for the live load also compressive force 935.36 kN. Total load is 1251.86 kN. So now next is the bottom chord member. So section 1 1 cuts the bottom chord member of L2 L3 so solving for section L2 L3 so force in the member L2 L3. So similarly here also we will keep the unit load in the region A L2 which is left hand side of the section 1 1. So limit for the same is 0 to 10 meter by considering A as origin. Since here we have kept the unit load in the left hand side of the section 1 1. So we will consider for the analysis for the calculation right hand side of the section 1 1. So we need to determine the forces in the member L2 L3. So here we will take the moment at U2. So x by 30 into 20 with negative signs since it is anti-clockwise plus f of L to L3 which is clockwise so f of L to L3 into 7.5 equal to 0 so we will rearrange it so f of L to L3 is equal to x into 20 divided by 30 into 7.5 so here we are consider the limit as 0 to 10 meter so at x equal to 0 we will obtain the influence line diagram ordinate for force in the member L to L3 as also 0 and x at x equal to 10 meter so ordinate for ILD is 
as we have kept the unit load in the left hand side of the section 1 1 now we'll keep the unit load in the right hand side of the section 1 1 so when unit load is in the region L3 B which is right hand side of the section 1 1 with the limit 15 to 30 meter by considering A as origin so here also since we have kept the unit load in the right hand side of the section 1 1 for the sake of simplicity we'll consider left hand side of the section 1 1 for the calculation so here also we'll take the moment at u2 so 30 minus x by 30 into 10 minus f of l2 l3 into 7.5 we'll rearrange the term 30 minus x into 10 divided by 30 into 7.5 whereas the limits for the x value which we consider is 15 to 30 so at 15 meter the ordinate for the ILD diagram is 0 0.67 and at x equal to 30 meter the ordinate is 0 meter so as we obtain all the ordinates so we'll draw the influence line diagram so at x equal to 0 meter the ordinate was 0 at x equal to 10 meter the ordinate was 0.89 at x equal to 15 meter ordinate is 0.67 at x equal to 30 the ordinate is 0 so here we got the positive triangular diagram for the influence line diagram for force in member L2 L3 now force in member L2 L3 force due to dead load is area of ILD into dead load so area of ILD is half into base is effective length of the span into 0.89 is the height of the triangle into 21.1 kN per meter dead load per girder so it force due to dead load is 281.69 kN which is tensile similarly force due to live load is area of ILD into load into CDA so CDA for 30 meter span length is 0.372 whereas for 30 meter span length total load for the bending moment is 2727 kN is for per track now for per girder we will divide it by 2 so it is in kN now again divide it by 30 meter span so we will get here the intensity into area into 1.372 so we will increase here the load by 37.2 percent due to impact so load is 832.47 kN tensile. Now we will feed all the data in the same table. So bottom cord member L2 L3 so we obtain the force in member due to dead load as 281.69 kN. Now we will go to the third member the section 1 1 cuts U2 L3 which is diagonal member. So solving for section U2 L3 similarly here also when unit load is in the region A L2 that is LHS of section 1 1 limits are same by considering A as origin 0 to 10 meter for the sake of simplicity we will consider right hand side of the section 1 1 here we need to determine the forces in the member U2 L3 so here we'll use the summation f of y static equilibrium condition summation f of y equal to 0 so x by 30 is going upward so we'll resolve this force vertically so f of u2 l3 sine of theta so we'll get the value of sine theta we have in this triangle in this triangle as we have this opposite side as 7.5 meter this side as 5 meter as well will obtain by Pythagoras theorem this diagonal size as 9.01 meter so sine theta is opposite upon hypotenuse so we'll get the value of sine theta as 0.832 
So f of u2 L3 is equal to minus x by 30 into 0 0.832. So we'll simplify this term. So f of u2 L3 is equal to minus x divided by 24.96. We have the limits for value of x. So at x equal to 0, the ordinates are 0. At x equal to 10 meter, ordinates are minus 0 0.4. So now we are considered, we are kept the, now we have kept the unit load in the left hand side of the section 1 1. Now we will keep in the right hand side of the section 1 1. So what happened? So when unit load is in the region L3B, that is right hand side of the section 1 1 with limits 15 to 30 meter. For the sake of simplicity here also, we will consider left hand side of the section 1 1. So again here static equilibrium conditions summation Fy will consider so 30 minus x by 30 is going upward so which is with the positive sign and while we will resolve this member force f of u to l3 vertically downward so it will be minus f of u to l3 into sin theta. So we will rearrange the term so f of u to l3 is equal to 30 minus x divided by 30 into 0.832. We'll simplify it. So it will be 30 minus x divided by 24.96. We have the limits for the value of x. So at x equal to 15 meter, f of u2 l3 is equal to 0.6. And at x, at x equal to 30 meter, f of u2 l3 will be 0. So here we got all the ordinates for making the influence line diagram so at x equal to 0 meter the value of ordinate is 0 at x equal to 10 meter ordinate value is minus 0.4 at x equal to 15 meter the ordinate value is 0 0.6 at x equal to 30 meter the ordinate value is also 0. Now in previous two members in the top chord member bottom chord member the triangular diagram was completely either positive or negative here for the diagonal member here we can see the some part is negative and some part of the diagram is positive first we'll obtain this value so by symmetry of the triangles we'll get this value as 2 meter and this value as 3 meter here since some portion of the diagram is negative, some portion of the diagram is positive. So first we'll get the force in the member U2L3 due to dead load. So area of ILD, so first we'll obtain the positive area as well negative area. So negative area is half into base length is 12 meter into 0.4. So we'll get it 2.4. Positive area is half, base length is 18 meter into 0.6 is 5.4 so area of ILD will be 5.4 minus 2.4 into dead load intensity 21.1 so we'll get it 63.3 kilonewton tensile force now since here negative area positive area both are mentioned here so will determine the compressive force as well as tensile force. So first we'll get the compressive force due to live load which is negative area of ILD into load into CDA. So one thing here we had to kept in our mind that the length for the negative area is 12 meter. So accordingly we'll get the CDA value. So CDA is 0 0.15 plus 8 divided by 6 plus L. So we'll consider dead length. So CDA is 0.594 and for the 12 meter span what is the loading? So we'll refer the bridge rules. So for 12 meter the load is 1377 kN per track. So for per girder we'll divide it by 2 divide by 12 for the intensity. Into 2.4 is the negative area into 1.594 is the CDA. 
CDA value is 0.594, so we'll increase the load by 59.4%. We'll get it here 219.49 kN. Similarly, we'll obtain the tensile force due to live load. So positive area of ILD into load into CDA. So positive area is 5.4. The length is 18 meter for the positive areas. Accordingly, we'll obtain the CDA. Here CDA for negative and positive area won't be same. The CDA value is 0 0.15 plus 8 divided by 6 plus 18. 18 is the positive area length. So we'll get here the CDA as 0.483 that means we'll we have to increase the load by 48.3%. So now for 18 meter length, what is the value? Now for the 18 meters length, the value total load for the bending moment is 1820 kN for per track. So for per girder, we'll divide it by 2 by 18 for the intensity into 5.4 is the positive area into 1.483 CDA so we'll get the total load as 404.86 kN. We'll feed the same value in the tables so for diagonal member U2 L3 the force in the member due to dead load was tensile load 63.3 kN force in the member due to live load here we got compressive as well as tensile force both the forces we got here so now total load, so total compressive force is 219.49, total tensile force is 468.16 kN. So here we have analyzed, we have obtained the forces in the member U2, U3, U2, L3, L2, L3. Now next all the forces will determine in the next lecture. Thank you.